Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the worst movies of 2017. Since I've already talked about the best movies, it's time to talk about a bunch of crap. There were some pretty bad movies this year, not gonna lie. And I actually have more bad movies on this list than I've ever had on a worst of list. So that's optimistic. I guess it was a good year for movies nobody liked in that regard, but I did think there were a lot of movies I got mad at. There were a lot of movies I hated. There were a lot of crap this year especially with animation i feel like it was a rough animation year oof not so much on tv but in theaters not so good i'm hoping this year is better 2018 so anyway let's go through this because why not so i'm going to talk about what i felt were really the worst of the worst of the worst of a pretty worst year in terms of everything except for like me personally i thought it was a pretty good year but, you know, world-wise, not so great. These are probably the films that encapsulate this stupid year um, better than any of them. At number eight is... Motherfucking Monster Trucks. Would it be the film that caused a revolution? Would it be the film that changed America and society as we realized monsters could be in trucks and fight an oil company trying to break environmental law and done unnatural evil? Would it bring us all up and show us what love really was? No, it is a dumb movie. It's real stupid, like a little kid's movie with monsters and trucks. And I can't believe I hyped it up so much. But I had a decent enough time. It's kind of like watching dumb and stupid kind of swirl around each other and not really sure where dumb or stupid begins or ends and having family friendly fun go in there as well. And you're not sure what is up and what is down. And you realize like you're not thinking about the art of cinema. You're not thinking about how maybe a film for children should show them something about role models or the importance of something. You don't care because there's a monster in a fucking truck and this is here to have a good time and show you that America can do some things great and the things we can do great are monsters in trucks which was fucking filmed in Canada wait see Creech was gonna get into one of these lists you knew it I I mean I sort of had to because it wasn't that bad but it wasn't like that good I guess number seven I think because it was not as bad as most of them and it did have a drunk Stanley Tucci Merlin, but it's still pretty awful and definitely deserves to be called out. Maybe just because of its ridiculousness, but it was still horrible. And that is at number seven, Transformers The Last Night. So basically the thing that makes these movies special is they make a lot of money. That's it. Nobody, artistically, they represent nothing. They represent helping Michael Bay's career out when it was kind of not doing incredibly well. And so now we're stuck with him. It's kind of like what happened with Zack Snyder, except before and probably way longer. It's nice that audiences have rejected this movie to a certain degree. It still made a lot of money. I notice people are like, oh, people see it ironically because they laugh at it. I see that a lot with this movie. And I'm like, first off... Fuck all of you, because you have made these movies successful. You made this franchise happen. You're the reason all of us have to watch these fucking things. And then you're telling me you don't like them now and you're going to make fun of them. It's the fifth movie. This isn't the studio's fault. I mean, it's Michael Bay's fault, partly, that he made them. And Spielberg, that he is involved somehow. And I'm not exactly sure about that one. I mean, he's an executive producer, but whatever. But point being is I really blame the audience for this. Because these movies are awful. And they've always been awful. And they'll always be awful. So basically you find out there's this world order that started with King Arthur of the Knights of Transformers or something and they were always helping everyone from like Shakespeare to Winston Churchill to Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. How they helped, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they transformed into stuff back then so I don't really understand. They were just big robots but if that was the case like wouldn't people remember that anyway. So they did all this stuff and apparently Shia LaBeouf was in this order and they show a picture of all the people and it's a picture of Shai just going boo okay number six is pretty notorious but is also not good so you know but number six is bright words out that this movie is really bad and when anyone's making a movie they don't set out to make a bad one or most of the time really they try to make the best movie they couldn't possibly make and I don't think that's true with this movie at all and you think this could work out and 
it really doesn't and it's so bland in so many ways that it's special high conceptness like the idea that you're seeing in the trailers is really the only thing that's special about it and it's kind of overall hollywood bland ordinary blandness washes over it in such a way that it doesn't feel special it's like so remarkable how almost everyone involved in this seemed to kill anything special about it and i don't think this is one of the worst films of the year but it's honestly one of the least memorable all right so now we're on to the top five worst oh wow all these are animation related oh well they're all big budget stuff too on a lot of this oh man because you don't really get to see the small budget stuff and you also kind of hate the big budget stuff because they have so much money to promote it and plan it and then when they screw up you're like oh wow that's really annoying that I have to see images from your shitty movie everywhere for like a couple months and you fucked it up. I guess maybe that's why. I don't know. It's a good question. Anyway, regardless of all that, my number five worst movie of the year is Ghost in the Shell. It's not a good action movie. It's not a good smart sci-fi movie. It's not a sci-fi movie of ideas. Frankly, the best thing it's going to be is a subpar version of Lucy, which is not an action movie that I think anyone talks about who even likes action movies. So good luck making a movie that at best was kind of a ridiculously weird action movie that didn't entirely work and you made the worst version of it. My number four is another another Netflix movie, one that I almost forgot about, and I think most people did, thankfully, and that is Death Note. This is kind of part, like, reminds me a lot of Dragon Ball Evolution and kind of the mistake of adapting something without really thinking about who it's for while also being unnecessarily looks like faithful to it and including way too many details that any movie can really hold. So you're making kind of a product that's virtually for no one but also trying to be for someone and whoever that person is. I don't think we'll ever meet them and if you did you probably wouldn't like them because they clearly have really bad taste in movies. I think this narrative would have worked if you had a cat and mouse game with L and Light Turner or you had kind of a romance movie. If they just decided what movie they were making and instead they're like, we're making the Death Note movie. And you're like, well, yeah, we all know that. But like, pick a part of Death Note to do and don't just try to do everything and that's kind of the biggest problem with this this is a lot more in common with like the ben affleck daredevil than it does with like actual competent filmmaking and number three is another movie i think most people forgot about but it is animated for some reason and was made and that is nut job 2 nutty by nature there are certain animated films that anger you you know, you see your emoji movies, your minion films, things like that. But the nut job is so generic and so bland and so colorful and so badly made and badly written and structured and things, it doesn't drive a real strong hate. It kind of just washes over you like the sands of time wash over us all and then we don't notice it and then eventually life is over and everything is moved on without us. It is like feeling your life slowly drift away from you as you realize you're sitting there watching this film where you've seen every joke done in a million different cartoons and even when it was done the first time most of these jokes weren't very funny. Almost jokes that have been done in so many animated films you wonder why they even keep doing them or feel like that these were exactly the perfect precise kind of animated jokes that will always work even though you know they never work but the filmmakers either have a grand ambivalence over the quality of this film or they're that conniving and greedy and generic of studio heads that they came up with a film like the Not Job 2, Nutty by Nature, and make this film so you can bring your kids to so they can be disappointed and experience the nothingness feeling that the rest of their lives will be. So number two, I guess is not technically a feature, but movie lists are dumb anyway and who cares this is probably the only movie even though it's a short to get pulled even though they said it was always the plan despite no one hearing about that plan until they pulled it but whatever anyway number two is olaf's frozen adventure i don't totally hate frozen as much as most people but i saw this short and this short is fucking bullshit this short which plays before Coco, is 20 minutes long and is horrible. Look, 
the frozen phenomenon i really haven't gone on like one of those angry rant things about but olaf's frozen adventure is everything evil and horrible in the world that everyone warned me about this fucking franchise of phenomenon come to life this is not good at all and the fact that i didn't get a pixar short instead i got this even the worst pixar shorts that you kind of see and you go oh right i forgot about that is better than seeing this crap like the craziest thing about olaf's frozen adventure is there's no conflict none there is no conflict in this short there's no reason for the plot happening it's just like elsa and anna in arendelle don't have a holiday tradition first off who gives a shit why would i care about that but okay so then they're like we're gonna have a surprise thing because the peasants don't have anything else to do on christmas and like come to our surprise thing go oh no we got our own things and go oh we thought you were peasants and had nothing else to do there were levels in that man there's some fucking class issue shit in this movie that they go unaddressed they were just like i don't know they're stupid poor people what else they got to do except like eat our free food and make us feel better and then they leave because like we've got our own lives and then anna and elsa are like oh now we're sad because we couldn't feel better than these poor people and then olaf's all like oh i'll find you tradition or something and then that's like the whole short and then olaf gets lost and they find him and they're like we had a tradition all the time and it involved olaf which we conveniently forgot about and the guy does a troll thing and i think we all know what number one is and i probably don't need to say it even but i'm just gonna because you know i think we all know the emoji movie is the worst movie of 2017 it has absolutely really no soul within it. it has no real auteur voice other than sony and having money it's almost like if god didn't exist and money was the only thing that mattered then an emoji movie would be the embodiment of that kind of a society this is just so horrible it's like a dumpster garbage fire put out with elephant piss and then lit on fire again because that elephant was drinking radioactive waste and then you kind of just want to vacate the area and make it kind of like a chernobyl type of thing but this is like the kind of movie you take your kids to if you don't like your kids this is terrible it is such a regurgitation of the whole like oh believe in yourself thing it's almost like cynical in the way it does it oh emojis only have one thing so of course this works perfectly but the way they thought this works perfectly is so evil in the way it's using that genre and if you're going to make a joke depressing version of what this movie would be that is this movie it's almost depressing and letting you down on the fact that it is so predictable it's sad to see how predictable it is the emoji movie is going to infect all of us and it's infected us in the way that we're just keep seeing this genre do the exact same crap over and over again and not do anything new with it maybe the emoji movie isn't wrong maybe i'm wrong maybe this is art now maybe i should maybe i should accept this i mean maybe, why am i not accepting the emoji movie maybe this is the future of cinema like we should just accept that advertising and technology is what stories are about now that's how you relate to people why am i so acting like that cinema should, an animation should be something and, and say something without acknowledging our corporate overlords. Really, the Emoji movie is our dystopian future, and we should all really just accept it and be fine with it. I mean, you know, is it so wrong to mention Dropbox? We all use it anyway. We should just accept Emoji movie because this is our future. Soon we'll have movies about everything from, you know, toilet paper to Flappy Bird or something, and we'll just all have to be okay with that. And we'll probably just all accept it and see it. That's just the end of it. This is what art is now. So those were the worst movies of 2017. I think, you know, pretty good year for awful animated related things. I guess I could have put Beauty and the Beast on here. Shit. That was worse than... Should I have? Maybe I can still... Can we still do that? Where would I put it even? This movie's kind of bullshit, and it never really gets past that. That makes me sad. There could have been ten of these, probably. Well, whatever. Anyway, so these were the worst ones, and... If you would like to talk about any of the bad movies that I talked about in this, or want to list what you thought were the worst movies of 2017, and why you thought they were the worst movies, or worst movies I forgot about... Or how I was totally unfair to Ghost in the Shell or Death Note. or I don't think there's any of these anyone would defend, really. Would they? I mean, maybe Not Job 2 probably has some defenders or something. I hope not. That's sad. Comment below with any of what you felt were the worst movies in 2017. Or if you've seen any of these movies and feel maybe that they are the worst or they are unjustifiably classified as that by a jerk like me. But anyway... 
Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching the reviews and content I made in 2017. And subscribe if you would like to.